April 15th, 2024, and we're going to live stream a massive uh, lure building shipment and supplies box together. I've got literally uh, three pages of stuff in the shipment. So we're going to check some, uh, going to check out everything that's in there. There's a bunch of new stuff along with some stuff you guys have seen before, of course, but mostly new things. At the moment, if you guys are uh, watching this any other day besides what did I say today was the 15th, uh, I'm not live, so if you're in the comments commenting, I won't be able to respond via video, but I can respond in the comments, so uh, let me know if you're seeing it. I'm waiting for a couple other, or waiting for anybody, actually, to, to join, and then we can start going over the unboxing. Uh, I did start off with a really cool one. What's up, dude? Finally made it to the live. Yes, we're getting ready to unbox... I've kind of glanced at some of it, but I've got a whole box full of lure building supplies that we're going to going to go over. So I've got my door open because it's hot in here and I haven't set up my air conditioner unit in here. So we'll see how long before I have to close it because of the bugs. Brian, what's up, my friend? I've already got bugs flying around in here. I'm go I've got my little, uh, let's see. You might have to close that door. If I set this right here, you guys would be able to see it. Cool. Mr. G Custom Baits, what's up? So we got 15 people hopping. I'm going to go ahead and close my door because the bugs are starting to fly in because of my lights. I have a, uh, a window unit, air conditioning unit I put in during the summertime. And I haven't done that yet. It just finally started getting warm enough. Uh, I'm going to start off and go ahead and show you guys the first one. I, I opened it in order to... What's up, Patrick? Uh, opened it so I could take a cover photo for it. And it is... Uh, I'm really excited about this one. It's an 8-inch carp. This thing is massive. Like, I knew it was going to be big because it said 8 inches. But <laughs> this is like a whole new level. I don't know if my little stands here can hold it. Oh, Lord. Let's see. There we go. Getting fancy. But these things are pretty cool. I don't, I've never painted any carp patterns before. But an insanely good quality blank. Hold it up there a little bit better for you guys so you can see it. And it's got the spinning swivels, which I've heard that that's a pretty big thing or a new thing. I don't know if it's new or not, but I know a lot of guys like that on their swim baits. And the other thing is it's got another line tie right there. I just noticed. I haven't looked at any of these. Like I said, I kind of glanced through the box whenever I, I first got it on uh, I think it was Saturday. But I haven't like inspected them or looked at them really close yet. So we're kind of seeing everything together at the same time. But that's pretty interesting too on the front there. It's got like a spinning swivel. And then... Uh, both those swivels. So that'll be a really fun one to paint. I've never done any cart patterns. So we'll see about that. I'm going to try turning off this light. There you go. That looks better. And I invited uh, Matt and Slim. I don't know if you guys remember them. I let them know we were streaming so they might show up. One of them just responded. So I'm going to see. Uh, okay. So it's just going to be me. But anyways, first one up. Giant carp, eight inch, two joints, swim bait. So if you guys have painted any carp patterns, uh, tag me on Instagram or Facebook or something so I can check it out. Uh, next, I got a couple new things that we're going to be trying. I've done before. Let me get this guy out of the way for the moment. I've done it before, but never as a video on YouTube. And that is uh, foiling, or not foiling, but using like lure tape. Man, I know you're super busy and probably see a bunch of emails, but I finally sent a picture of a whole tackle box worth of baits. I did see you. Thanks for the inspiration. Okay, right on. I will check them out. Sometimes it takes me a couple days to respond to the messages, but I will. I do my best to respond to them. And then can you show how to do realistic scales? Three-tone. That's from Happy Guy. Yes, uh, that's something else I'm wanting to dial in or get better at this summer is 
hyper realistic. A lot of times I always paint, I always paint stuff kind of like this. It's like really bright or kind of obnoxious. Like it looks cool, but I really want to zero it in on some realistic ones. So can I show you exactly how to do it? No, but can I show you me learning how to do it? Yes. So I got you there, but uh, some other stuff we're going to be doing, I'm going to be trying or learning how to do or getting better at is doing the uh, foiling or foiling and then using like the lure tape. I'm going to see real quick. I know one of these buttons, uh, it makes the screen bigger so you guys can see more of the screen, but I'm scared to push stuff. That one looks like it flips it. I don't know what that one does. So maybe I'll just leave it alone. Hopefully you guys can see enough of the screen. Uh, that's great. I'll learn it with you. Perfect. What's up, BG? So my first YouTube live. Welcome. Today we're, we're not painting anything, but I'm showing you guys a whole bunch of stuff. I got, I think I added all up. It's around 155 lure blanks all together on the shipment. So I've got plenty of stuff that we can practice uh, realistic scales and other stuff on. So one of them, taping baits. I also got, uh, we'll kind of go through the boring stuff real quick. Uh, some more eyes. I know a bunch of people. There you go. You can kind of see them better. Uh, on my shorts, when I posted them, a bunch of people asked about these eyes. So I got more of them since everybody liked them. And then I got some of them in green too. They're kind of like, I like using them on my dead shad or kind of like zombie patterns. How much money do you need to start making your own lures? Uh, it kind of depends on, I guess, the route you're going. I'd say your most expensive part of that would be paints and airbrush. Blanks can be pretty cheap, but exact price, I, I have no idea. Are you liking the dipping the clear coat? I'm thinking about switching over to the clear coat. I'm really digging it. When you start hand signing your lures? I started doing that this year, hand signing them. I was trying something a little bit different. Uh, and so far, was that you that was asking about the marker? I don't, I don't know if I ever responded to whoever that was. Uh, painters, this is the one I'm using, but it's really, really inconsistent. Sometimes I get a beautiful signature, and then other times it just kind of dumps paint, which is really frustrating. So if you guys hand sign your baits or anybody that might be watching this video, uh, oops, sorry, it looked like my internet dropped out for a second. Uh, if you hand sign your baits and you have a marker that works, let me know because I, I want one. And then, yes, I cut a little stencil for the BB. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit too. I like the water slide because it looks so clean, but I don't like the time it takes. So I have to let the paint dry, then I do the water slide, and then let make sure that's dry, and then I clear coat. So I'm trying to cut out the water slide on the signature. So either hand signing it or uh, airbrushing the logo on. Uh, but we got some more really big eyes too. I got a couple bait builds coming up that I'm going to do some really big eyes on. Got those. These, I didn't realize that they were die cut to a, a spinner bait blade, but I've got a bunch of spinner bait blank blades too. So some more foil tape. And then the rest of these are, and yeah, simple and clean. That's what I was thinking too on those. The rest of these are all different foil tapes. I'm going to use some of them for making customize and then foiling or like stickering uh, the blanks as well. So there'll be some videos on that coming up. But enough of the boring stuff. Uh, I'll show you guys some more blanks. I've got, I got so, I got more stuff that I know what to do with and I got to figure out how to organize everything better. So I'll just start stacking everything over there. And then uh, if there's anything you guys see that's like, oh, that's cool. You want to you see that sooner rather than later, let me know. Hi, Uncle Baker. What's up, Owen? We're going over some fishing lures I just got in. So this guy, I'm going to pop him up on here so you guys can kind of see him. Oh, that should work. Somewhere right in there. This guy is a Coffin Bill Medium Deep Diver, 2.5 ounce, and it's 3 and 3 quarter inch. Oh, sorry, three and a half inches long. So I've never painted, believe it or not, any that have that coffin bill. And this is one of those blanks. There's a couple of them in here that the bait looks cool before any paint. So I really like those because then if you do a, a middle of the road, A-OK -okay paint job, the blank, if it looks cool to start with, then you should end up with a pretty good result. Uh, but that's one of them. Uh, pretty excited about that one. And it's more of like a, a flat side with a one knock in there. 
<clears throat> so I got a good old batch of those. These ones are pretty cool too. I've got some little bitty frog splasher mouse. I don't know if the, there you go, light's kind of blowing it out a little bit. But some really cool looking frog blanks too. So I'll throw this one up there. Which these, well, that light's really blowing that out. Have you done those hologram ones and have the built-in flash in them? I've painted some that have a built-in flash, and then I've painted some that have been pre-foiled, like from the manufacturer. I've done one or two where I put the foil on myself, so that's kind of what I got all that the sticker material for. Uh, but these frog ones are an inch and a half frog popper, so I think we can do some pretty cool paint jobs on those. I've only played around with a couple different frog patterns. I'm going to try turning this light here a little bit. Does that look okay? Can you guys see everything okay? That way it's not blowing out the uh, thing as much. Yeah, it looks better, I think. Anyway, some little frog ones. Those should be fun. And then these guys, these ones are going to be a challenge, I think. They're an inch and a half micro splasher little bitty tiny ones so i don't know what patterns we're going to do on those but look at that bill on the front the lip anyways it's another one i don't know if you guys have played around with micro painting i think that's harder than doing some sort of crazy big swim bait because your canvas is so small so micro painting i've got that one i have one blank I've had forever that's rolling around the shop somewhere that's smaller than that but otherwise that'll be the smallest uh smallest one I've ever painted before which is funny because I've painted a ton of big baits but very few small ones so those will be fun as well I don't know what patterns we're going to do on those but uh I like it when this eye hole or eye socket <laughs> I guess would be the better word is uh about the same size as the bait there so that's pretty cool so micros, frogs, and I also got a bunch of new paint colors too, which I'll run over those real quick here in a little bit with you guys as well. But I wanted to make sure and show you all the cool blanks uh, first. And hopefully you guys will be inspired or if you've painted something similar, uh, let me know and give me some inspiration. These guys are eight inch two joint fast swim bait another monster which these things make a splash in the water but we we're talking brian i think that was me and you talking about that a second ago uh, doing realistic stuff when i saw these i was like i gotta dial in and get a perfect uh, bass like hyper realistic bass pattern and this one's the same where it's got the uh, rotating hook hangers I'm going to have to figure out something different for my lure display stands. Have you done the hologram ones that have the built-in flat? Okay, yeah. Yeah, massive. Hey, is the string coming in okay for everybody? It's I don't know. I think it's fine, but it almost seems like my internet keeps dropping out. Need the extra heavy rod. Yeah, I don't have a rod big enough for these, so <laughs> we're going to have to talk to Matt about them. We're off to get a rod. But that thing, massive. Like, it's one thing when you're, like, I was placing the order for it or getting ready to buy it. Okay, Brian said stream's coming clear. Okay, follow-up question. Do you guys like the stream being vertical like this, portrait? Or would you rather me turn it landscape? I think landscape is better because you get more of a picture, but YouTube recommends it being portrait. And Clint said stream's good. Okay, so let me know on that. If you guys are watching on your phones and the portrait's fine, I'll leave it alone. But if you'd rather, we can rotate it the other way. I go by based off of what YouTube recommends, and they recommend portrait because it shows up in the live or in the uh, the shorts feed. Landscape looks a tad better. What's up, John? Thank you, John. Got quite a few people hopping in here. 
Fish fry. Yeah, we got an eight inch swim bait. I got, I only got three of them. So we have three chances to get a good paint job. So anyways, that's one of them. So, and if you guys, I'm assuming when you join the stream, I agree with Brian. Okay. I'm going to try rotating it. I don't know since the stream's already going, if it'll automatically correct for it or not. So I'll try rotating it. And if it doesn't work, then next stream, next stream, we'll do it the other way. So you'll have to let me know. Orientation is locked. Rotate device back. Okay, hold on. I wonder. John said, hi, I'm new. What's up, John? Best way to catch brown trout now that it's getting warmer. I don't know on that one. I haven't fished for a ton of trout. Uh, I'm going to hit a couple buttons here and see if I can get it to unlock. So if the stream drops out for a second, it should, should be back. Uh, hold on one second. Highlight saved your channel. Nope, nope, not that. Try this button. Okay. Nah. All right, next stream, I'll I'll do it landscape, if, if uh, that looks better for you guys. So this one, I guess it won't let me, because I've already started the stream. Unless these buttons. Nope, that's just a share button. Okay, I'm going to try to fix it, and I'll leave it alone. So there you go. You can see a little bit more of the table better. Okay, next live stream, we'll we'll do it landscape. Uh, yeah, as far as uh, trout, I don't know. I haven't fished for a ton of trout. New to the chat, have you ever created a saltwater croaker pattern? No, I have not. I'll have to look that one up. That's what I forgot to grab was, let me grab a piece of paper. I got one right here. And whenever you guys mention something like that, I like to write it down so then I can look it up later and then be able to do a video on it. So otherwise I have trouble remembering. Uh, it's like an iPad. It's like the Samsung version of the iPad. Um... Saltwater croaker pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write down this stuff. That way, I don't forget, and I'll I'll be able to look it up later. And if I don't respond to your message in the chat after several minutes, uh, feel free to send it again because I missed it. Uh, I, I I always I do my best to respond to everyone because I appreciate you guys. A ton and that's why i like doing the streams because it feels a little bit more personal or i actually get to talk with you uh, so if i missed your message i'm not ignoring it i just simply missed it another simple bait which i've gotten these ones before and really really liked the blank i didn't know if you could swipe to your quick settings and take the portrait lock off i think it's on the youtube settings uh because it was asking me before i started and and it said recommended land or portrait. So that's why I did that one. Love your design. Thank you, John. Uh, these guys are the extra deep divers, four and a half inches long, which we've painted. Uh, I've done a couple of these as shorts and I actually did a video. I think it was actually this one on the video. Really, really liked the way these looked with these paint jobs. And I only had a couple of them. So I went ahead and got a whole bunch more. That way I could do crank out a whole bunch of them. But I want to do like a rainbow, every color under the rainbow in the, the same pattern. So I got more of them. I think I got either 10 or 15. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Shadow said, should I sub? I mean, that's up to you, bro. What's up, Rick? Okay, next bait. And these, uh, maybe not these. One of these... I. I was going to try to foil the side of them too. Thanks, John. You too. Okay. We're going to show a couple new paint colors. And then, and then we'll move back into the blanks. Uh, something new. It's not a paint color, but something new I'm going to be playing around with is a 4004. Uh-oh, we got to lift that up a little bit more. Let's see. Nope. There we go. It's a transparent base. Uh, I haven't played with a whole lot of base coats before. Uh, you ever paint a topwater wake snake? Thinking of sending you one of those too, if you're into that. Should be in the mail in the next couple of days. Dude, I actually got something similar. I think it's, oh, well, I don't want to give it away. I've got 
a really big wake top water something in this box but otherwise no this will be the first one i've painted so transparent base colors there's a couple different base options i was going to uh be trying out that way we can figure out which one of those works good this one's a metallic bronze which i have only have it's funny how many videos i do all the time and my color palette is very small so i'm trying to slowly grow that but i only have a pearlized gold and a pearl copper so getting the what i say it was metallic bronze i am excited about that well, man, so with the transparent base, if you have micro powder paint mixed up, exactly, which I actually have some, uh, some stuff like that, that Barlow's had sent me a while back. I actually <laughs> haven't used it yet. Uh, but anyways, metallic bronze, and then we've got Wicked Flare Fuchsia Gold. So if you guys watched my Wicked Silver Flare video, this one should be the same type of paint or should react to the same However, it will be gold, which I like using the gold on my shad patterns. Uh, Cosmic Sparkle Silver, which most of the paints I keep getting are for shad patterns. Uh, so that's that one kind of looks like a boring tube of white paint for you guys. But it should be really reflective and shiny and pretty. We also got <laughs> Wicked Flare Lemon Lime, which you can see the paint's all kind of separated at the moment. But this one, at least the little example photo they had, uh, looked really cool too. Another one, Wicked Flare Blue Magenta. Which I'll have to put them on the paint shaker to really get them shook up. But anyways, if you guys are interested, I was thinking, at least on a couple of these, doing a video just like we did with the Wicked Silver Flare. Where it's just kind of like shows it over black, shows it over clear, and shows it over white. If you guys like those videos or they help you out. Uh, let me know because those are I can crank those out pretty quick. And then we'll speed through these because these are paint colors I already had, but I just running out. Just wondering how to use the pearlized colors. So depending on which one it is. All right, uh, John, you'll have to quit spamming the the chat with that. I I appreciate it though. Uh, like the flare colors, they recommend you spray it over a dark base. So. For example, you spray it over black. That was the other thing I was going to try was doing the uh, the Wicked Silver Flare. Not necessarily that one, but the Wicked Flare colors. I was going to put them over a different base, like a dark blue. Uh, how much was it for each paint? Depending on the bottle, all these flare colors, I think, were right around 12 bucks, somewhere in that area. And then these other ones are like 4 4 bucks. Like this one, like transparent tropical green. Uh, so these smaller ones, a lot cheaper. I'm sorry, not smaller. The ones that aren't as fancy, they don't have different flare colors. And yeah, they can get expensive. That's why I was thinking on these, I can do the video showing the color exactly how it looks. So then it'd be up to you whether or not you want to buy it. And I've got, I was talking to somebody else. I forget who it was. I've got a couple different cheaper paint options too that i actually have saved in my amazon cart at the moment so i'm going to get those in that are supposed to be color changing ones uh are you going to use them in this stream not in this stream this one we're just unboxing I'm showing you guys kind of like a preview of upcoming painting videos and then uh next stream of course we'll we'll do whichever ones you guys want to but color palette i'm definitely lacking in the greens department so i got a couple of those tropical green we got forest green, and then these ones are just uh, restocking ones I had, the fluorescent. Oh no, this one's new. Fluorescent, I, I can never say that word right. Red, uh, fluorescent, <laughs> like a neon yellow. I love using that color. And then just some transparent black. But I forget who it was. Uh, somebody asked how much for each paint. Yeah, there's definitely cheaper options on the paints. These, I love the Createx colors, and I've gotten a couple other variations or colors of those ones specifically and loved them. So that's why I like throwing 11, 12 bucks out for the paint. And it literally lasts me forever, too. Uh, last two colors, then we'll move on to the exciting blue blanks. Uh, fluorescent orange, and then, oh, 
this one I'm really excited about. What's your thoughts on Valley Joe? I'm not exactly sure what that is. Really excited about this one. You guys let me know if you've used this before. It doesn't have to be this color. But have you ever painted a glow-in-the-dark bait before? I I saw this and was like, instantly, it's mine, buying it. So glow-in-the-dark, I think, would be really cool. Where do you get your blanks from? Barlow's Tackle. I actually have them linked in the description below. Thank you, Rose. I'm doing great, John. Uh, glow-in-the-dark. I was thinking a glide bait would be really cool uh, doing that. But have you guys painted any glow in the dark? If so, how'd it work? And then did you notice a difference in catching fish on glow in the dark baits at night? Really excited about that one. I've seen pictures and videos of people's baits that they've like on the on the Facebook page uh, with glow in the dark. And I was like, man, that looks cool. I never really thought about getting it until I saw it on their website. Oh no, one more color. Highlight gold. I did, I'm not gonna lie, I sprayed this one the other day and it looked it looked pretty cool. Next up, this has been a popular request. I wonder if you can mix colors with the glow in the dark and make it glow different colors. I think so. I would assume, or you could spray the glow in the dark paint first and then maybe some of the other colors over top of it. Uh, Four and a half ounce bait, and this is for this is a very popular request. Uh, this bad boy, ten inches long, weighing in at four and a half ounces. It is a musky bait. Now I've not fished for musky very much. I don't really have. There's one lake that they have them stocked in around here. They're very very difficult to catch. And I caught one, one time on a Whopper Plopper. But I have people ask me all the time, can you do some musky patterns? <laughs> Dude, this was one, whenever I was ordering, I'm like, oh yeah, 10 inches long. I've, paid, I've made some baits approaching that. Uh, but when I actually got it, I was like, <laughs> holy smokes. And it comes with a big old bill that pops in there. Man, look at that. I'm going to put this as my keychain on my truck keys. <laughs> so anyways, I got uh, three of them. So my thoughts were doing, I'll have to look it up because I, I don't know. I, I haven't really fished for them that much, but doing two popular musky patterns and then doing one that, that replicates a musky or looks like one or trying for that hyper-realistic. So big old 10 inch long, uh, four and a half ounce musky bait. So really excited about that one. You gonna go uh, musky fishing a few much? Um, have I have never used glow in the dark crank baits, but I've used glow in the dark rubble glows for salmon. Okay, right on. Okay, next up we got some airbrush cleaner always good to have that on hand most of the time i use water and then windex but i do like getting some actual purpose built airbrush cleaner to run through there from time to time uh, a couple boring things some little glass rattles i'm going to put in some of my baits i'm building and some upcoming builds and some more line ties along with some mustad uh, size four treble hooks i'll slide this back in there so i don't lose it And then, okay, we're getting back into kind of the, for us, normal peeper. I make wooden musky baits like that out of poplar. Uh, what colors do I do? <laughs> I, I know from my understanding, musky like really bright colors. I, I might be wrong on that. But I'm, I fish for pretty much largemouth bass, and that's it. Uh, what's a good alternative to paint brush cleaner? Uh, water and Windex is what I use. So people might argue that the Windex uh, could cause harm to the airbrush. I don't, I don't think it does. Using things like paint stripper or paint thinner, or like I have lacquer thinner up there on my shelf, using stuff like that uh, can mess up your airbrush. So you just keep it simple with water and or Windex. Uh, but I do know that some people use like distilled water because I guess other water or hard water could kind of mess up your airbrush over time so if you want the the correct 
uh, by the book answer distilled water or airbrush cleaner. I use uh, deep well water and Windex and then usually well, by the end of the day, I'll use the airbrush cleaner to clean everything. I mean, you got any bait recommendations when fishing for cool dude to kiss? I don't know. You're on your own on that one. Okay, this one, three inch lipless shad, which I don't think I've had this blank before. And this was one that was going to be a contest. It's like the stream dropped out for a second. Sorry about that. Uh, this bait is going to be a contestant for can Zach use the foil sticker to, to do it on a bait. For musky baits, if it's dark, murky water, bright colors work good. But if it's nice and clear, I try to go with silver gold, kind of like a shad. Okay, I can do shad. I know shad. Hey, John, if you don't mind, quit quit spamming the, the chat. Otherwise, I'll have to remove you from it. Because we're all, I, I'm trying to see everybody's comments. And if you're just spamming it, uh, I'll... I'll remove you from the from the thing. Okay, hold on. All right. There we go. Uh, Shad is a cool dude. <laughs> yes. I think I'm missing everybody's messages now. Hold on. His little arrow popped up. There we go. Have you painted the Barlow's Crawl Dad lure yet? I don't think so. And I don't think I have it on this order. Uh, I can get that on order, though. There's a couple other things that they had that weren't in stock that I wanted to order. So uh, I'll make sure and get that on the next one. But anyways, these guys, we're going to try foiling these. And then I think I'm going to do another water slide pattern that fits these. I like foiling or using like hand-cut stencils on baits that are really flat. Well, I don't know for sure on the foil, and I haven't done it before very often. <laughs> I've only foiled two baits my whole life, and one of them was on a flat-sided bait like this, and the other one was on a curved bait, and it worked way better on a flat-sided one. That's what I'm trying to say. Almost looks like a Guggen blank. It does, doesn't it? I don't know exactly which one. There's a bunch of different lipless ones that look just like that. So that's the plan with these guys. Let's get another cool one. This one's pretty neat. Six inches and three joints. Foil it and spray it with UV paint. We use uh, tiger fire patterns here for the pike. Should work for musky too. Love your crawfish water slide. I've done a lot of lures with it. I need to do, what, what do you, you guys want more crawl patterns? Or, because some of them, ideas I had you could almost just do a stencil for so I was thinking about doing another uh, like crawl dad like a 2024 updated water slide pattern uh, so let me know on that and I, I'll get some more of those going too this one is a six inch bass I think is what it looks like or kind of resembles so another one of those guys a little bit more reserved compared to uh, to that 10 inch one we have <laughs> so I should be able to throw this one on my rod these other ones i'm have to buy a different rod for uh this is let's see foil and then spray with yes with uv like spraying it with clear coat okay so foil it and then put clear coat on it and then paint it is that what you're saying that was going to be my my attempt at it was foiling and then clear coat roughing up the clear coat and then painting Hello, good luck, bro. Perfect share. Thank you. So that's one of them. I've got three of those guys as well. Those kind of blanks do you have to prime them? So I usually clean them. Actually, let me pull this back out. On blanks like this one, whenever the body's really smooth, I'll sometimes take some really fine sandpaper and rough them up. Uh, and then I usually just spray them with a white base and then heat set it. And that was the whole point of buying the transparent base was to see if that helps get the paint to stick. I usually don't have a problem with the paint uh, coming off unless I really scratch it. I like chrome patterns, but you got pinks and blues, yellows, purples popping here and there. Okay, so I think the, the musky ones will do a fire tiger and then we'll do two loud ones and do one realistic. 
I think will be the plan for that. Uh, I just got back from the lake catching 20 fish and come to this live. <laughs> what, what? Uh, so as far as prepping the baits, I want to try a couple different base colors for that or purpose built. Make an all pink blue. I got you, Mason. Uh, another cool little one here. This guy, pretty simple looking bait. Nothing crazy going on there, but I really liked the way this one looked. Four and a quarter inch minnow floater diver. So this one, we should probably be able to uh, put some foil tape on that one too, if we wanted, or the water slide. So another pretty simple looking bait. And I was wondering, no, oh, I guess this one's silent. It's got a little bit of a knock. Okay, gotta find another exciting one. Oh, no, I got one. Lure I like, or the lure I use, like the one you had, but it's 1.95. Can you tell me how you make hard bait for medium water sea fish? Very high action. Uh, I haven't done any saltwater baits, but high actions usually a uh, big bill on the front. Uh, this one I'm really excited about. Really unique looking blank. Minnow almost looks like the money badger from Berkeley. Uh, these guys. They're like super realistic, but such a weird shape. Like the front, like the mouth of it. I don't know if that's kind of showing up for you guys. Looks extremely realistic. So I think we can do a couple really cool patterns on this one, on this one. And then I thought the angled joint like that was pretty cool. Those lures are like using a cheat code. These ones are, I hope so. I got, I guess I only got five of these. But I thought these were, were really neat, too. I was trying to get stuff that was different, or at least different, new to me. And those are uh, three inch with one joint. I do not make lures for a living. I make enough lures that it somewhat funds the project, but that's about it. Those are like mega bats. Okay, so that makes me feel good. I'm going to follow that up. So if those, if you guys are telling me that blink catches fish... <laughs> are you in for for a surprise good evening from lake worth florida what's up ag if you just joined you joined at the perfect time no the shad one you had first oh this one the floater diver well that's that's it, it, it's not uh not as cool as what i'm about to show you but good to know if these things work that well so the one I just showed you, the, the jointed one, is three inches. Here, I'm going to pop it back out. This is this exciting. All right, we're going to put the little three-incher up here. All right, you guys see the three-incher, right? You know what would work better than a three-inch bait? <laughs> How about an eight-inch one? <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. I don't... I don't even know what to say, honestly. But if that's there's there's a bunch of jokes to be made here. I, I gotta gotta stop myself. But yeah, holy cow is right. <laughs> I I really don't know what to say other than holy smokes. So three inch, okay, and then eight inch. Again, I'm gonna have to get a different rod. Fishing with Fox, he said, yo, what's up? And then, uh, good musky bait. Okay, so it sounds like we need to go musky fishing. It sounds like, first off, I need to buy a bigger rod, and then we need to go musky painting. Just paint it and hang it on the wall. <laughs> what are you trying to catch with it? Sharks? I mean, look, big fish like big baits, right? That's kind of my, my theory. Forgot to give a shout out from Canada. Nice. What time is it in Canada? Finally stopped shaking with fishing today. Right on. I haven't gone fishing this year. It's kind of sad. I spend all my time in my garage and I don't go fishing. I'm thinking this upcoming weekend, but I probably won't be throwing this. Uh, but I think I'm going to surprise Matt with one of these. I'm, we're going to do like a fishing challenge. And I'm going to pull this one out for me and Slim to fish with. And I'll pull this one out for, <laughs> for Matt and see what he says. 
Tim said the beer is glorious. Thank you, Tim. You got a white pole for that lure. Yeah, I'm going to need like a, uh, like a shaft, like a baseball bat. It'll probably work. Medium heavy baseball bat. Anyways, so eight inch, whatever this thing is, it's really something. I think hanging on the wall will be the answer uh, for me. But we're talking about signing baits earlier. Uh, I got plenty of room to screw up my signature on this one. World record musky. Oh man, sorry it keeps dropping out. I don't I don't know why. I'm charging and plugged in and everything. Would you say eight ounce? It is eight inches. I can weigh it though real quick. Actually, this scale might not be big enough to uh, to weigh it. Uh, Dobbins eight oh seven. That's what. That's that's the rod you think I should get, but uh, I can let you know. Whoop! It's too big for this little scale. It's pushing six ounces. It's like five six. I have to hold up part of it there. Five six. So it's under six ounces. So definitely a monster though. Ten forty four p.m. Here it is nine forty four. Like your sense of humor, Baker, especially with the major baits. Dude, they crack me up. I like big baits. Like I've made the thanks to Matt. I don't know if you guys remember Matt. We haven't done any videos together in a while. We actually tried, we filmed for 45 minutes the other night out here in my garage. My brother came out and was a cameraman. Me, Matt, and Slim all filmed. Dude, the microphone wasn't turned on. So it's just 45 minutes of us just silent. Uh, but Matt got me into the big baits. So like this one, this is one I built or made, big old glide bait. Uh, but I haven't fished them enough to like, I, I usually give the giant ones to Matt and then I make a smaller one for myself. So I haven't purchased a rod that can actually handle this stuff. So I think it's fun. I think, uh, I think Matt will get a kick out of that one as well. Does it sink like a rock? I would assume. Uh, we will find out together, though. I'll get one painted, and then I'll I'll surprise Matt with one. Best bulk split rings. Yeah, I need some monsters for that one. Okay, up next, we've got... This one's just kind of a basic one. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw... Oh, no, I don't know where it's at. Oh, man. It was uh, one of my videos... We were painting videos. It's got to be up here. Um, you know what? It might be, might be in this box. Nope. I don't know where it's at. Anyways, one of my videos I did a couple videos ago where we did the hoop net stencil. I really like that bait. I got to find that. Anyways, uh, basic, pretty simple. Uh, bait here so no no eight inch ones shouldn't that muff be on top dude i'm bald look at this it's rough just hit 30 bald my forehead's brighter than my future uh have you ever painted a kgb chad shed no i'm going to though matt has one of those that needs a new paint job uh but this blank it's like a medium diver i don't know if it says on here it just says medium diver uh, really, really like this blank. Always looks super clean. Always looks good painted or makes your paint job look good. Uh, so I got a handful of those. I like practicing paint jobs on them, but nothing fancy. Uh, need to bring those big baits here to Michigan, to Lake St. Clair, do some musky fishing. Dude, I'm all about it. The lure is similar to what we are using. The river, catch and release, rockfish, some 50 plus pounds on that giant eight inch bait. Sounds fun. I need to go somewhere else besides Missouri, mid-Missouri, and go fishing. I pretty much have catfish, crappie, uh, largemouth, smallmouth, and that's kind of it. There's some other stuff mixed in there. Can you do a live or a video of your workshop tour so we can see how your stuff is rigged up? Maybe other painters like us can do the same ideas. Yes, I'm actually... I can show you real quick. I'll just kind of spin this around. I'm actually going to be hopefully rebuilding all this soon. It, my setup's really just... Oh, no. I'm hung up on the airbrushes. Oh, geez. 
my setup's really kind of just rigged together. It's like borderline duct tape holding everything together, which is fine. But uh, I'm wanting to rebuild my whole paint desk here soon because I'm running out of space for paints. And I got to do something different. Seven Sage from Missouri too. We're basically neighbors. But yeah, I think those other videos I'm wanting to do, kind of like workshop Wednesday, Wednesdays, we'll be able to get more. You guys can kind of see what's in the shop. But just so you know, there's nothing fancy. <laughs> But uh, uh, Midwest Outdoors said, I live in Missouri. Do you live in the Midwest area? I'm outside of St. Louis, like an hour, hour and a half or so. Yep, crappie, bat, bl blath, bass, bluegill, brim, sunfish, and catfish in Missouri. How long ago? I think we're going to just go ahead and remove you from the thing. I don't know. I apologize to everyone with spam people coming in here. I... Okay, come on. Um, there we go. Uh, there we go. All right. And we're going to do this too. Okay. Yeah, dude, I don't know why people are, I guess, bored. So they join live streams and then just start throwing spam stuff here. Uh, hour and 45 minutes from St. Louis. Dude, we could borderline be neighbors. Probably are. Uh, West? You know where, uh, let's see. You know where Montgomery County is? If you know Montgomery County, then we are neighbors. From Michigan, we have all the cold water that you mentioned. But also salmon, trout, big pike, and muskie. So I guess in Missouri, we do have trout. Just where I'm at, the only trout that are available are like stocked ones. Nothing that's uh, like natural. Uh, mailing address, P.O. box for us to send you some cool stuff to. Uh, you can shoot me a message or shoot me an email. And I can let you know. I need to get an actual P.O. box set up. Uh, but if you got something, uh, just shoot me a message. I do, but I'm not from there. That's where I grew up. Was out in Montgomery County. Acrylic paints. I use pretty much all of them are Createx airbrush paints, but I have mixed acrylic paints with some airbrush paint reducer and sprayed those. I need a glide bait ideas for Washington. Any fun ideas? Uh, as far as like paint patterns, or what do you mean by that? Next bait. See, we started with the big ones, and then we're, we're working our way down to the normal people fishing lures. This is something like I would throw. Let me put this up here. I have a feeling these things are going to look phenomenal in the water and crush some fish. Uh, fishing with Foxy. Paint patterns, I like doing. I think it's really fun doing like the dirty shad. So kind of like this one. This one I really went more zombie, but like dirty shed. This one's a little bit more like cleaner. I like doing or or uh, golds and blues and silvers, and then doing blacks and grays on top of them. And this one I kind of went more more zombie with it. But those those are my favorites. I've got uh, a bait build video coming out very soon. I'm hoping this weekend I'll have it posted. And that blank is like a shad shape. So I'll be doing a couple shad painting videos coming up soon. It's good to see some of the cool stuff. I got to go. Got to get to bed. Have work in the morning. I hear you, Anthony. Yeah, I've got work tomorrow too. So as soon as we get to this box, we'll, I'll be, be hitting the bed. West. Yep, we probably, we probably live pretty darn close to each other. Are you closer to Columbia? I'm definitely closer to St. Louis than I am Columbia. What treble hooks do you like or recommend? I use, uh, I'll have to look, uh, let's see, I think I got, nope, I like Mustad and, uh, I'm probably going to say the name wrong, but Gamagatsu, is that, sounds like a Pokemon character, and then I will, I don't know where they're at, but I'll use, uh, real popular ones, pretty common, it depends on the bait, like crankbaits and stuff that I lose all the time, I use cheaper baits, or cheaper hooks but if it's a fancier bait i'll use the uh like the mustads or gamagatsu uh beard is only 10 i see hey yo can you okay this is four and three quarter inch shad swim baits 
So we'll do some shad patterns on this too, uh, whoever's asking on that one. So definitely some shad painting videos coming out soon. If you guys are new to lure painting or you've been in the game for a long time, you might already do this. I go to lure supply websites and then I filter by cheapest and then I buy a whole bunch of whatever the cheapest one is to practice on. So if it's a new pattern I'm working on or trying something different or trying something different with the clear coat, I'll get a whole pack of whatever the cheapest blank they have is. That way, if I screw something up, I'm not losing a ton of money on, on stuff. So definitely recommend doing that if you're new to painting or you're trying out different clear coats. Get a whole bunch of whatever the cheapest bait your supplier has is. That way, if you're testing new stuff and it goes wrong, it's on a cheap blank. How are you doing today, bud? Just subscribe, subscribe to you. Thanks for the... Thanks for the subscription. We just hit 20,000. Uh, was that Saturday, I think? So thanks everyone that subscribed. It's a big number, and I'm very proud of that. And I appreciate you guys. Um, been to many of the lakes in Tennessee. Uh, so I fish Ozarks. Do you fish Ozarks? I haven't been down there yet this year. But if you know Lake of the Ozarks, uh, definitely been down there quite a bit. Uh, some more blanks I got, which you guys have seen before, is a topwater splasher, kind of like a whopper plopper. This was the one we did the silver flare videos with. So I was thinking about when we experiment with some of these other colors I got today, I'll do it on the same blanks. That way we can compare all of them together and then be able to see what the colors look like. Just bought some lure blanks from senior videos, plan on airbrushing them to the good work. Thank you. I think it said Bounty Outdoors. Appreciate it. I live in Tennessee. What is your favorite spot to go? Uh, I fish, I do a lot of pond hopping, but then uh, Fish Ozarks, I would say, is the big lake or big one that everybody would probably know. And then we've got, so we have the, the six inch shad. I got the four and three quarter inch shad and then moving on down the line from there uh not in tennessee for me i think you guys might be talking to each other oh and slim said i'm bg that makes sense uh quill cool lake towards that way said bg so everybody say hi to bg in the chat that's uh that's slim he's really lazy friend of mine sitting on his couch at home could be here but decided not to hopefully he don't see this uh four inch shad so we're working our way down to smaller normal people normal people baits i got quite a few of these i thought they looked really clean one of those baits or blanks that just looks good before paint so if you do a, a crappy paint job it should still look good and this one's got the little angry eyes which i, I like those Back in the day, Sycamore and Pine Lake was good spots. I don't know now. I have not fished either one of those. <clears throat> okay, we're getting down. We're, we're nearing the end here. This guy, remember our, you guys missed it earlier. We've got an 8-inch bass swim bait. Massive one. I'll have to buy a bigger rod to even throw it. This one is a 6-inch two-joint. Uh, bass swim bait so we should be able to do some pretty cool realistic patterns on on these guys so i got three of those so i was thinking aiming for like baby bass pattern and then like a full-grown bass and then something that just kind of looks crazy and then we're we're getting real close to the end looks like i got a stray stray whopper plopper here Okay, so six inch bass. Tim's Ford is tough lake, but it's great for smallmouth. Does anyone still paint with a brush, like with a normal paintbrush? Uh, I haven't done that in a long time, but I do use a normal paint brush, paint brush for some detail work sometimes. Uh, what state is this? I'm out of Missouri. 
Okay, this one. I'm really excited about this one. I've mentioned a couple times tonight, I like blanks that look cool before there's even any paint on them. And this is one of them. I should have bought a ton of these, but it's okay. We can paint a couple and then uh, and get some more. But this one looks cool and there's not even any paint on it yet. Hopefully you guys can see those okay. This one is a three inch square bill. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to look on their website and see uh, how deep this one dives. But this thing, it just looks fun. It looks mean, cool shape, something different. I think the name of the game for fishing popular areas is throwing something that looks different. Pattern could be the same, but shape could be kind of different. So I have high hopes uh, for these guys. So I did get, it looks probably about like 10 of them or so. Uh, so we'll do some cool patterns on those uh i paint plastic military models with a brush right on i've actually watched some people painting models uh there's a guy who's painting i'm pretty sure it was model military stuff too on youtube i was watching some of his videos he was talking about airbrush paints uh that looks fun i've painted some little miniatures like people before but it's been been a long time since i've done that it's like a mega bass the blank does i would assume a lot of the Blanks are probably knockoffs or something. But anyways, pretty excited about that one as well. Then I've got... Oh yeah, this is a new one too. Two and a half inch long wake bait. Curious to see what the bill does. Oh, whoop. oh no, my thing came off. Here, I'll just grab it by the bill there. I'm trying to get it more towards the center so it... Staying in the same part of the screen. Uh, to, oh, goodness. I'm trying to think of what... I can't remember what that material is called. The lure lip on it. Circuit board, I think is what it's called. That one's got the little circuit board lure lip on there. Don't fall over. What's your thoughts on Mark Twain Lake? I've never fished it. I've, I know quite a few people said it's pretty muddy. And there's lots of tree stumps. The only downside of Barlow is they don't tell you what the knockoff of it is. I think most places are like that. Uh, I would imagine a lot of them come from the same manufacturers. But pretty cool little wake bait. I've never painted, well, I've painted one similar, but I've never thrown one like that. So it'll be interesting to see what those guys do. And we're down to our last two blanks. I'm going to save the coolest one for last. So next up is a... Two inch long, half ounce, shallow diving shad. So another pretty small one here. Pretty cute little blank. That one's also got very flat sides. So I think we'll be able to, if I can figure out the foil tape, uh, we should be able to foil tape that or do the water slide on these if we wanted to. But pretty neat little blank. Uh, when you get a chance, you have to check out alternative lures. They got some pretty cool stuff. They're another blank company out of Arizona, I believe. Okay, yeah, I'll check them out. Uh, I have played with Golden Dark Paint. And how bright does it glow at night? Okay, so I, I haven't yet. This will be my first time using the Golden Dark Paint. So we'll, we'll find that out together. Okay, last one. The grand finale. This one. Gotta hide it till I can read it. 8.75 so eight and three quarter inch and it, it, uh, if anybody can guess what it is well i kind of get i kind of hinted at it at the beginning of the stream so you guys might know make sure okay this one i should have bought more than i only bought two of them this thing let's see what they call it this is a lizard this thing is crazy looking. Which, Slim, if you're still in the chat, this looks like something you would have bought for $60 somewhere through once and then gave to me. Thing looks pretty cool. So I got two of these. I think... Okay, yeah, it does have little... I don't know if you guys will be able to see that on camera. I blocked that light. It does have little feet on the side. <laughs> it's a crap. Uh, but I was thinking we could probably do like a snake pattern on one of them too. 
That thing's pretty wild though. Really, really curious to see how this swims in the water because it's a very simple construction. So I feel like we could probably build something uh, similar to that. So that'd be pretty neat too. We'll see on that one. So I have two of these. <laughs> Rick said, wow. So a bunch of massive baits coming up. I think I should probably go ahead and put my order in for a bigger rod so we can actually go throw these and test them so you guys can see how, how they react in the water. But that, oh, I have one more thing. It's not that exciting. But this is an Iwata airbrush cleaning kit. I've never purchased a proper airbrush cleaning kit. So I was going to try that out. And if it works out pretty good, I was going to do a video showing you guys how, how to use it or how I use it. And if it's worth the, I think it was only 10 bucks or something like that. So not a bad price if it helps make the airbrush last longer. We've been talking about it all night and that's been sitting on the floor right there and totally forgot I had it. Bassin with, is it Big Malone? Said, what's up? What's up, bro? You're, you're coming in towards the end of our stream. Uh, we got a bunch of really cool looking baits. I'll pop this one back out if anybody, if anybody just joined, I'll show you this one. Got to fish the river in Georgia. We call them Sholies, is that what it is? Great time in the Flint River. It sounds fun. I need to venture outside of Missouri. Uh, this, I think, was the coolest one, or got the most reaction tonight. Uh, got three of those massive 8-inch bait. <laughs> so we'll do something fun with them. I, I don't know exactly what. I'm probably going to need more paint just to, uh, just to, just to, like, prep it. But that's pretty much the rundown of all the painting videos anyways painting videos coming up at least you kind of get an idea of all the blanks coming on and then some of the new paints i got new paint colors uh, i've got a long list of other ideas we've still got all the build videos i'll actually show you guys uh let's see this is one still in progress the build video i'm currently working on is showing you how to make a mold to be able to pour resin baits uh, yeah, wall decoration. Uh, video coming out, build video I'm working on is how to make a mold off of a wooden bait and then how to pour resin baits. And this is the resin bait that we're pouring in that one. So you guys get a little sneak peek at that one. I got this one right here is all ready to go. This was the one I made in the video. That's why it's so dirty because we did a lot of work playing around with the, the weight and how much weight to add. So this one's a little bit cleaner. Uh, so that will be coming out, making a mold and then how to pour the resin baits. And then uh, we're going to be flooding the internet with lure painting videos. Those are a little bit easier to, to film and get out. Build ones, it literally takes me like two weeks to get a build one put together. I, and I filmed, I got home from work on Saturday and filmed for a couple hours Saturday afternoon. And then went to transfer the video files using this thing which i need to throw away and it like corrupted my video files so it was like pouring the first bait i lost all the video files for that they wouldn't work so i had to refilm it so it's like the the technology gods don't like me right now i keep having all kinds of issues so there's videos in the works so i'm sorry for lack of content coming out lately uh, but as you can see now i gotta, I gotta turn this a little bit more there's no lack of material. We're set on material, so we should be good to go. Uh, so trying to finish that build one. Of course, I'll be doing the shorts on YouTube and Instagram, kind of playing around with the paint patterns. Almost forgot your lights for your current box. Um, you'll have to shoot me a message and I can send you the link. They're ones I got off of Amazon. Uh, actually... I keep forgetting I'm live streaming on the tablet so I can look it up on my phone. Uh, I keep it saved. They are Everbeam, E-V-E-R-B-E-A-M. And it's the 365NM 50 watt. I have two of them. They are on Amazon. I can hold it up here if you want to take a screenshot. Oh, hold on a second here. There we go. I'm not trying to give away. Okay, there we go. That's the, oh, let me, 
there you go if you can see it you can screenshot it or if you uh, shoot me a message i can i can send you a link but that's the exact ones that i i have and i have two of them and i'm thinking about making the box slightly bigger i think the lights uh cars custom louvers said zach i'm a little late hey no problem uh we're going to be doing i'm i'm trying to get back into the regular like weekly live streams i it's way more fun than just sitting out here painting by myself i being able to talk to everybody got the screenshot thanks no problem so hey while we're talking about those lights i'm thinking about making the box a little bit bigger so if you do order those um either start off by making the box a little bit bigger or don't make it as small as I did. I think what happens sometimes is the lights are so strong that the clear coat has that reaction so fast that it sometimes shrinks the clear coat. Or it doesn't shrink it, but it almost seems like it hardens too fast. And I think that causes a problem sometimes on how it looks on the bait. So I was thinking about making the box a little bit bigger so they're a little bit further away from the light so it cures just a little bit slower right now it literally hardens in seconds and i think that's too fast and it kind of like pulls all the clear coat together because i'll kind of get imperfections in it here and there i don't know if that's the problem or i right now i've just been i paint the bait and i don't do anything else and i just dip it in the clear coat so it's clear coat hitting raw paint well it's dry of course so i might need to do some sort of top coat which i have i just haven't played around with the different ones i'm going to do a video uh clear coating directly on top of the paint with no top coat and then i'm gonna do the same bait with the top coat and then I, I have like two or three different top coats i'm gonna try it and then we'll clear coat them all the exact same way and see if they all work the exact same or if there's differences or i think the box needs to be a little bit bigger uh, i don't know how soon i'll be getting that video out though so it might be something you'll experiment on your own too don't forget the thumbs up what is the best UV top coat? I use Alumalite. Uh, I really like them. I've talked with them quite a bit too. They're really cool people. And uh, I've been using their stuff way for, for a long time. So really like it. They have a new formula out, which I have had zero, zero problems with it. I've seen some people or other people have messaged me saying that they can scratch it off with their fingernail. Mine's literally... Uh, let's see like this one this was the one from our last live stream dude I, maybe i need sharper fingernails <laughs> i i can't scratch it off so i don't know if it's something to do with their paint or their lights or what the deal is but literally chewing at it there i finally scratched it with my teeth just a little bit but they're the way they're talking about it is like they go like that and it's flaking off. So I have had no problems. And if I can literally chew on it with my crooked teeth, I think it will hold up to a bass just fine. If you're just joining the live stream. That's a really weird, weird time to join. But their, their stuff's been great. And they're really cool people too. I like supporting companies that have uh, fun people working for them or running them. Uh, it makes it a lot more, a lot more entertaining. Uh, with dipping the clear coat you're using, do you have to let those... I'm sorry, I read that wrong. With that dipping clear coat you're using, do you have to use those lights to dry? Yes, I do. You can use sunlight, but sunlight could be inconsistent. And most of the time when I'm painting or clear coating, it's at night anyways. So you have to use some form of LED, not LED, but UV light to actually cure it. Now they have specifications on... Uh, different wavelengths and wattage and the cure time for that. So it doesn't have to be those specific ones that I just showed a little bit ago, but it does need to be the correct wavelength, I think. And the wattage will change how fast it cures. But the wavelength, I think, is really important. The NM, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Man, cut my beard off last night, getting hot. Man, I'm I'm in it to win it. I'm bald. I'm well, I'm going bald, so I buzz it. So I let all the heat come up through here, and the beard just stays there looking good. You know, I, I let the let the head, the bald head, relieve the heat. But if I had hair on my head, I probably wouldn't have that long of a beard. You ever hooked yourself? Yes, but not not bad enough to go to the doctor. Matt has several times. Not trying to call you out, Matt, but just saying. Hello from Korea. 
Good talking with you, bro. Hope to talk more soon for sure. Next video, we'll do uh, painting. I just started using UV clear coat. Is it uh, Illumilites or is it a different one? Uh, but anyways, seen that in a couple of different Facebook groups, people talking about the new formula not being as good. I don't know what we're doing different. For me, I haven't had any problems and it seems like it's working great. And I was just chewing. I finally bit down really hard and was able to scratch, scratch this one. Uh, but otherwise, I, I haven't had any issues with it. So I don't know what the difference is there. For me, it's they, they've been doing, doing really, really good. Do you paint soft plastics? No, I do not. I've seen some videos and it looks fun, uh, but I've never tried that. Okay, I think I'm caught up on everybody's messages there. Probably the lights they're using. And that's what they said, that it's the same lights and same setup that they were using for the old formula. So I don't know if there's a difference in the formula. Uh, I'll have to try to find one of my old cans and see if it is a different wavelength or something like that. Can you speak Korean? Negative. I can only speak English. So next live stream, we'll do a painting video. And then I will have the tablet turn the other way. Landscape, if you guys like the way that looks better, I can do that. No problem. Uh, if you guys had any other questions, you can comment them. Or if you needed links to any of the baits I showed you, let me know. And I can let you know the SKU number if you uh, want it sooner rather than later. Otherwise, I think that is all I have for tonight. And I forget who it was left earlier because they have work tomorrow. I also have work tomorrow so it's a well, it's 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 my bedtime uh i've been using those solarize it's okay if wet not dry it will turn cloudy the the clear coat will turn cloudy landscape would be better for watching on my tv okay yeah that's no problem the only reason i even did the uh portrait mode is because youtube was like this is what we recommend because it shows up in the shorts feed but I don't like the portrait mode. I, I think it looks way better the other way. But I just did it in case it, it helped get the stream out there. Uh, but landscape, it is. that I like that better too. I also think when it's landscape, the chat shows up on one side, which is a little bit easier. And it's not filling up the space. So so we'll do landscape next time. And then if uh, if it's not showing up in the stream, then it's not showing up. Or if it's not showing up on, on the other thing. Uh, broadcast is on YouTube, just YouTube live. Okay. I am going to call it a night here, folks. If you got any questions, shoot me a message. You might not hear back from me till tomorrow, but I'll do my best to get to everyone's, uh, comments or emails. The bait ain't dry. The clear turns cloudy. If the bait, bait ain't dry. Oh, you're saying if the paint isn't dry, the clear coat turns cloudy. Good night, Baker. I'll catch you next live. Thank you, Brian. I'm also going, I think tomorrow night, I'm going to be editing videos, so I won't be painting or doing anything. I'm going to be working on the video I try to get done by this weekend. Uh, but next time, if I'm planning on live streaming, I'll try to post earlier in the day that I'll be live streaming with a time. That way you guys can have a little bit more of a heads up. Everybody's saying thank you and good night. Thanks, everyone. Keith, if you just joined, uh, we're getting right in the stream, so I'm sorry if, if you missed it. Next one, we'll actually be painting some stuff. Uh, but that is it for tonight. Thank you guys for joining. It's good talking to you, and I will catch you guys in the next stream. Uh, may want to make a post in the Facebook group. Yes, I'll, I'll do something. Oh, no, Rusty said, wait, I have to ask something. Okay, Rusty, I'm doing this for you. It better, it better not be a spam. Um, if you guys are on Facebook, I Baker Builds, I'm on there as uh, both me, just Zach Baker. You can find me on there. And then I have just a normal Facebook page for uh, Baker Builds. So I'll post it on those. I don't, I don't like posting personal or not personal, but like advertisements and tackling the dream. Try to keep it where it's just people showing stuff. And not advertising for for other things. So if you want, if you're on Facebook, you can either add me as a friend as Zach Baker, or follow Baker Builds Facebook page on there, and then I'll I'll advertise for the stream on both of those. You like the goats or the bombers? Those must be sports teams or something. I, I ain't got no no idea on that one, Captain. I make stuff. 
by myself in my garage and I don't watch TV. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to bed. Uh, shoot me a message if you have any questions. I will see you guys in the next one.